my first few jobs when I was a teenager involved manual labor. I did some work at a nursery where my job was to take pot plants and lay them out in the sun so they could grow bigger. And it was a brutal job. It was in the middle of the West Australian summer. And uh, yeah, we were the 14, 15 year old grunt workers who had to, yeah, lay out all these pot plants in the scorching sun and then get back on the trailer and then go back into the factory the potting machine and grab more pot plants, load up the trailer, get back out there on the fucking bumpy, shaky gravel road out to the paddock place and do it all day with one smoko break. I think a couple smoko breaks, one in the morning, one in the arvo and a spot of lunch. So that was brutal. I also worked at a fast food place slinging chicken burgers and fries for a few years. And both of those jobs were uh, tough at times, uh, but I guess you'd say necessary, where it was like, yeah, if if I wasn't doing this, it wouldn't get done and that would be a problem. Um, but because I'm doing it, it's getting done. And then I finished uh, university and then I got a white collar job. And that really changed my whole mentality about the workforce in general because I realized, I looked around the office that I worked in and I was like, if for whatever reason we all, I don't know, there was a fucking terrorist attack or something on this building and we lost the majority of us, what utility would the world be missing in terms of the work that we're completing right now? And I came to the conclusion that it was very minimal um, and I started to kind of expand that and look beyond my little office. I looked at like the connecting departments and the clients that I worked with. And I realized that they were equally, a lot of their jobs and things that they were doing were equally meaningless. And I realized, holy fuck, so much of this shit is busy work essentially where it takes on its own meaning in a sense, because you kind of, it gets validated by the fact that there's a precedence there. It's like, well, this has always been an industry. We do things our way here. You specialize and you cordon off your kind of like little department. Everyone fights for budget and importance. And then it just grows from there. Culture changes politics is downstream from culture so that can sometimes have an impact in terms of like the invisible hand what people are doing how they're choosing to spend their time and spend their money and so that influences uh yeah, the workforce over time but i would argue that these busy work jobs are discontinued but new ones spring up and I feel like that's the way the world has been for the last hundred years, give or take, where there's definitely some necessary jobs. And then there's a lot that are not necessary. They are only necessary because we've created an era of specialization where it's just like, okay, you do that one thing and I'm just going to hope that that's important and you deserve all the money you're getting and then I'll do the same over here and we'll just can go on our merry way and hopefully the economy doesn't fall over but I think now with AI and people have been saying this for years who was the fucking uh the Yang gang geezer Andrew Yang talking about universal basic income and I think a lot of his argument was based on the fact that AI is going to come along and demolish things, things like trucking and stuff like that, where you can automate it. You don't need to pay a geezer $80,000 plus benefits a year. You can just get a compute, computer to do it for you. So it seems like we're on the precipice of that. And AI will seemingly be able to help us see, see who's like a legitimate necessary worker versus who's pretending to be the wizard of Oz when you're like a, a small man uh, with a projector as opposed to a, the 
all great and powerful laws. So I feel like that's what we're on the precipice on. And you've got two camps. You've got people who are like, this is going to be disastrous for society. And then other people are going to be, be like, no, it'll, it'll be great because we'll actually just, we'll have to find an equilibrium with the way we set up our economy and distribute wealth and utilize things like universal basic income. But we'll be able to harness technology, meaning that we'll have more leisure and more time to do things we actually enjoy. And so this technological AI fueled revolution will actually be a really positive thing for humanity. I guess the thing that I'm starting to question here, and I'd probably lean towards more the pessimistic side of things is that I think that uh, leisure is destructive um, if it doesn't, if it's not counterbalanced by real work. So I think that's the thing that we've fallen into the trap of, and it's definitely created some issues in society, but the work that we're doing, even if you have a ostensibly meaningless job, you attach meaning to it because it can still do, be demanding on your time. You might have to commute every day. You might have to navigate office politics. You might have to do ridiculous training courses to upskill while you're in the position. All this uh, you know, ultimately, which is all ultimately a waste of time because essentially your occupation or industry is irrelevant, but the hardship that you go through it to just compete and be a part of the workforce creates a sense of work or like a sense of, uh, of, of you having done something. Then that creates a, a, a strong desire for leisure and a strong desire to um, go in the opposite direction from time to time. So if that facade ends in terms of the commitment to work, then how are we going to think about leisure? And I think people are going to be confronted with extreme nothingness. They're not going to know how to fill their time with stuff that's actually fulfilling if work is taken away from them. I think um, I I sometimes think about um, the, I can't remember, I think it was like some Michael Palin documentary where he was talking about visiting the, uh, like the mines, the mining towns in Yorkshire and going through like their art from a hundred years ago when every Tom, Dick and Harry worked down the mines for a pittance. And they'd work super long hours. And then at the every two weeks, they'd have a big piss up whenever everyone got paid at the pub. And someone would whip out the fiddle. And then the fucking ladies would be doing the Irish jig. And you'd get, you'd fucking have a few pints and a couple cheeky ones. And then people would create, you know, art from this. They'd write songs or create kind of like plays and stuff. And, and it was all like the, the art came out of the hardship of the work. And so I think that that is kind of necessary. If you're, dis if you're detached from hardship, if you're detached from like a sense of routine, then you've got nothing to write about or, or create from. So even if we do have highly creative people and they do get more means and time to create, I don't think we're going to have anything to write about or sing about. And the holidays we go on won't have the same urgency because every day will be a holiday. So are we going to be cool with doing nothing for the rest of our lives? I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next one. Bye.